morning. My name is Aaron Smith. Uh, I work for Xeris as a software engineering director. Uh, before I worked for Xeris, I worked at a university uh, as, a, as a network engineer. So um, I do understand your plight, and I believe that it, it really helps me in my efforts to direct uh, the software at Xeris. So um, I have to say that the, the presentations at this conference have been phenomenal. I really appreciate everybody who shared their knowledge. Uh, it's clear that Wi-Fi is not getting any simpler, and neither will the software. Um, if you haven't pursued your chosen certification track, get on it, because it's not going to get any easier. Um, what I'd like to present today is just a little bit about the internals of how we build uh, AP software, what goes into the software stack. Um, it's, 10 minutes isn't a whole lot of time, but it'll, it'll show you roughly how we make the sausage in the software factory. So the components here that are in red and green, uh, if it's not big enough, the green is the kernel, and the red are basically open source components that are available for anybody to download and use. Those are the components that anybody could use to build software for uh, an access point. Um, and there's a lot of software out there. You know, if, if, you're, if your access point is built on VxWorks or some other commercial system, um, then you've got what they have. But if you're using open source software, there's, there's just a ton available. Uh, so the, the problem with it is it's not very easy to use if you have to turn all the, all the knobs and twiddle all the bits yourself. So an enterprise software engineering group will, will add the components in yellow and, and blue, which are your management interfaces, your command line, your web interface, your cloud interface, and also an overlay uh, management for all of your access points. And at, at the single system level, we improve how stations are managed, how the RF is managed, how the individual radio settings are done, and then we provide a configuration that's familiar uh, if you're familiar with other networking devices. So um, that's the value add of, of enterprise software, right? We also, if there's a bug in anything, whether we wrote it or not, we have to chase it. We have to make things faster. We have to make things more stable. The, the, the things that we use to build our software, we receive a good portion of it either from the open source community or from the vendor of your processor or your board. Uh, who here is, has ever used a, a software SDK to, to build software, be it an operating system? Oh, quite a few hands. Okay. Keep me honest then. Um, so. The basic components that you use are the, are the libraries and the software that come from, from that SDK. And it includes a compiler or a cross-compiler. So a cross-compiler runs on your x86 processor on your laptop or your desktop. And you feed it source code, and it spits out something that will run on an ARM or a MIPS or a PowerPC processor. Uh, they give you a bootloader so you can get everything uh, uh, loaded up. And then they give you some form of a kernel and operating system. If uh, if you started building embedded um, access point software too long ago, um, you kind of just had to hand stitch everything together. Um, but there's, there's a very commonly used utility called BusyBox. And it takes all of these open source programs that are really built to run on anything that resembles Unix. Uh, and they're, they're full of features. And they're really bloated. BusyBox takes those components, and they shrink them. And they make them faster. Uh, and they also have, if you've ever built a Linux kernel, you have that interface to configure the, the components that you want and how you want them configured. It's a menu-driven interface. And you just say, well, I, I want feature X, Y, Z. And then you hit the Go button, and it builds the kernel you want. BusyBox is a similar approach. You know, I want a Telnet server. I want an FTP client. I want a web server. I want ping. You, you, you pick those things, and then you say, make it. And it will download it cross-compile it, and spit it out for you. It's really cool. If your board vendor is not the same as your Wi-Fi chip vendor, then you have the fun of making sure that everything that your board vendor does in the kernel matches with everything that your chip vendor does in the kernel, and that the kernels are close enough in version that they were built for. Uh, and then your, your chip vendor will also give you some reference software in addition to the driver. And that reference software is meant to uh, I guess, demonstrate uh, more advanced features, like maybe their spectrum analysis. Generally, it's not something you can just 
package up and, and deliver with your access point. But it's a good starting point. So when you take all of this open source software or the SDK software, you've got to mix it in with the stuff that we add as an enterprise software organization, right? Your, your management interfaces uh, and things like that. Um, you, you could you know, install an ARM processor, just your favorite Linux distro, and then copy all the directories off, and then install your software in those directories, and then package it up, and there you have software. That's the worst way to do it, but you could do it that way. Uh, you really need to be able to build your software, all of it, from source. Uh, and there are some commercial build systems you could use. Um, you can build your own uh, a build system from scripts or in what's called a make file, if you're familiar with any programming. Uh, uh, it's a, just a syntax that helps you build your software. Um, from the same folks that made BusyBox, you also have a project called BuildRoot. And BuildRoot, BuildRoot is really cool. You take the BusyBox approach where you have this menu-driven thing, I want these programs. Now, BuildRoot expands on that, and you say, well, I don't only want those programs, I want this operating system at this version, and I want it for this architecture. And um, again, you hit the go button, and you tell it what you want it to spit out, uh, usually in the form of a bootable Linux image. So, so can you just take uh, all these open source components and make your own image to run on your enterprise router or enterprise access point? Maybe, probably not. Um, first of all, uh, if, depending on your board or your, or your processor, there might be specific optimizations or features that you won't get from an open source kernel. And in that case, you have to use the SDK from your vendor. If, uh, well, and we also play dirty tricks in the software. So uh, we, want, we might change the way that something is formatted. We might encrypt something. We might compress something in a different way just to ensure that our hardware runs our software and it's not easy to run your own. Um, and that's just kind of to protect the investment. And um, well, yeah, like I said, it's a dirty trick. So what are the challenges in, in enterprise access point software? First of all, definitely keeping up with you guys and the customers. We, <clears throat> we love the feedback that we get from you guys. It's not always uh, you know, an easy relationship, uh, but uh, it drives us to make our software better. Uh, but with the changes in the industry and in the standards, um, also updates to the SDK, updates to the kernel, updates to all the other software that we put into the system, it can be a real challenge to keep up with everything. Uh, also, when a competitor comes out with feature X, they will use that against us to, uh, to, to steal business or to take business. So we have to keep up with the competition. Uh, and every so often, you get a really fun um, fire drill, like last week when there was a, a vulnerability announced in a basic library that's across just about every Linux system on the earth. Um, and it, the exploit was in the DNS lookup code which it only affects you if you use DNS. Um, so you have fire drills like that that are fun. We also have to balance three big priorities. It may never crash. That is against all rules. It always has to be stable. Uh, it has to be faster than everybody else. And it has to have every feature that can be imagined. Uh, so. It's a constant balancing act, and, um, and it's tough to do, but that's, that's why we're a professional software organization, right? So the, the last biggest challenge, I think, is, is probably managing complexity. Now, this is a, a graph of the system calls in Microsoft IIS uh, web server. Um, open source software is a little cleaner. But uh, it just, it's just an example. This is just one small component of a much bigger system. And uh, when, you, when you build access point software, you're not talking about you know, pulling in three or four different packages and putting it in the kernel. Or, or you're, you're not talking about a couple hundred thousand lines of code. You're talking about literally tens of millions of lines of code that are compiled into an image that's a few megabytes in size and has to boot and run and be fast and always work. So um, that's why you shouldn't hate software geeks. Um, 
we're on your side, believe it or not. It may not always feel like that. Uh, but we deal with some of the same issues that you guys do, just at a more granular and magnified level. You deal with a, a big system complexity. We deal with the single system complexity and then the management of all those single entities. So we're on your side. Let's work together and be friends. Thank you very much.